So I'll be checking out more ultra short throw projectors and I have one that's running right now behind me. This is from AWOL Vision. It is called the LTV 3000 Pro and it's a stunner of an ultra short throw projector. And the beauty of course of ultra short throw projectors is you don't need a large room that is very wide. You can set this thing up. At the moment I have it about 25 inches away from my wall and I have a 120 inch image right here on an ALR screen which I'll also go over in this video a little bit. We get 3000 peak lumens. It does support Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, DTS Virtual X2 with it. It's got built-in speakers, they're 36 watt. They put out quite a bit of bass and they can fill a room too. And you'll hear later with my sample, including some sample fan noise. Is it loud? Well, I'll give you a bit of spoiler here. The fans and the cooling in this are excellent. It is not loud. I'll be going over the image quality, the UI that it has, and it also does come with the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. That's included, so you can then go through and use your favorite streaming apps like Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, all in 4K, all in HDR, and with Dolby Vision 2, of course. So when you open it up, this is what you will find inside what is included with the LTV 3000 Pro. We have the Fire TV Stick 4K Max here. So this is from Amazon and they include this because it's not running Android TV. So you just plug this in, then you're gonna have access to all your favorite streaming services like Netflix, like Amazon's Prime Video, of course. We have our power cable right here. Now they do give us two of these, so two sets of 3D, they are the shutter 3D style glasses. So there's a little sensor on the front of them. And it's good to see that there's two of those, of course, so you can enjoy watching 3D content. We get a microfiber cloth there for cleaning the glass that's over the front of the projector, the lens, and a user manual here for our LTV 3000 Pro. And then there is this card inside here. So it's a QR code, if you scan that, you can extend your warranty for one year for free. We've got our remote then, so that's pretty straightforward looking remote. Very similar to what you see normally with say an Android TV box there, so all of the controls there, and the batteries for it, so two AAA batteries. And finally, this, which is a audio visual cable, so an AV cable here that you can use with your LTV 3000 Pro. And here are the 3D glasses. This is the style of them, what they look like. Now we've got the sensor here at the front. There is a micro USB port for charging the built-in battery. Right at the top there is our power button with status LED. The frames are made out of plastic. They are nice and light, so 28 grams only. And also included with them, you will find a user manual. We have a micro USB to USB cable, a cloth for cleaning them, and a little pouch for storing those 3D glasses. Comes really well packaged in the box with a lot of padding around it, but let's take a look at what this projector offers. So there's LTV 3000 Pro, I think looks great. It reminds me a little bit of an old PlayStation 2, the style of it. The top is matte black, the sides have a glossy black to them with this gold accent. Along the left side there is this large vent and you'll find the cooling inside. There's a fan so it is actively cooled. Now we do have 36 watt speakers. They do support Dolby Atmos and DTS Virtual X. Right side more ventilation so I'll let you know the fan noise later on in this review and you'll find a USB 2 port located right here on the right. So the back here is ventilation and you'll find the area to install our Fire TV Stick 4K Max. Now I've already installed it, I'll just show you what it looks like. So it's nice and neat and tidy and they do include this micro USB cable for us which is a little smaller than the one you get in the box with the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. So we have here an HDMI, so it's 4K60 that does support input HDMI 2. It states ARC, but it is in fact eARC, which is of course what we want. We've got our LAN port, another USB 2 port type A, micro USB, this is just for service, so we won't be using that. And then an optical audio out, which is great to have. And just below that, that is where we plug it in for our power. Now there are on the top of it these two little sensors. If you have young children, the last thing you want them to do is stare right into a very bright projector or a dog or a cat and these sensors will detect that and it will cut out the laser so they don't end up damaging their eyesight. 
Then the Ultra Short Throw Laser Setup here. So it is a tri-laser, it's Texas Instruments, DLP their tech, and it is the T1 chipset it is using in this model here. Now the laser here is good for 25,000 hours, and it does have a maximum rating of 3000 peak lumens, HDR10 plus support, Dolby Vision, and the latency very good for a 4K ultra short throw projector. It is just 15 milliseconds at 4K. The contrast ratio is 2500 to 1. Now the underside of it, so there is a sensor right here and for the remote we have a mounting point here so there's four holes there, six millimeters and then adjustable feet, four of those. Now I do have a very good screen here that I'm testing it out with and this is the AWOL Vision's ambient light reflection screen. Now it is motorized, this is the remote for it and you can see it there in the background. I've just got it half up and I'll show you what it's like. Let's put it right up. It's a brilliant screen, it's 120 inches, and because it is light rejection, this screen, it's gonna make the projector look absolutely fantastic. So once it is fully open, it does one little step down where it tightens it up and there's no wrinkles or creases on the screen at all. Now I have the projector, it's 25 inches away from the 120 inch screen. I'm projecting at 120 inches right now, and that's 64 centimeters, the distance from where the laser is to the screen itself. Now a bit of a tip here, first align it without going into the keystone correction, the manual keystone correction. Get it as best as possible as you can with your furniture that you've got it set on. Unfortunately, I couldn't put it on furniture because my little table that I have for ultra short throw projectors were just too high. But how I have it now, I tweaked it all, then go into the keystone correction and you've got the eight point keystone correction as you can see now. It actually works really good, but it did take me a long time to get this set up as perfect or as best as I could. So here's the menu that it is running. It's got its own TV OS and it's based off Android 9, but no, it is not. Android TV. That's why we do have, of course, the Fire Stick. So under settings, I'll just run through a couple of things here. The image, you can go into this. You've got your own user modes. Now it's currently on user. You can put it on to sport, movie, vivid, game, standard, and I'll just keep it on user, which is the default at the moment. You have user settings. So you can adjust the brightness, the contrast, chroma, tone, sharpness. Good to have all of these options. Advanced settings in here. So you've got MEMC, you can set that to be either low, high, movie, and I'm just keeping on medium there. You have a low delay mode, noise reductions on medium, dynamic contrast, enhanced black levels, gamma, color temperature, white balance, color correction, MPG, medium, HDR, wide color gamut, that is on too as well. So there's a lot of things you can tweak here with the image. So zoom mode, that's currently on auto, uh, reset, I don't want to touch that, 3D setting, so this is when you can turn on the 3D mode, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on too as well in this video, in this review, Dolby Vision, now you've got screen size set to 100, uh, I need to actually put that to 120, just so it knows, screen gain, I would not touch that, I'll just leave that, so there's a lot of settings there for the image, now light, this is about the light settings here, so you can put the light mode on to bright, standard, soft, or user, I am using bright, I'll put it onto the highest, so that is the peak 3000 lumens that we do have with this unit here. Uh, actuator control, that is on. Correction chart, this is very good when you're trying to get the keystone and the focus and everything all correct. There is actually a focus menu too that I'll show you. So manual correction, that's what I showed you before. I'm not gonna mess with this because it took me so long to get it basically, well, perfect how I've got it now, or the best I can get it, almost perfect, and focus here, so we can go along and adjust this too if you needed to do so. So you probably will have to go in here and do this because I did notice that when I first set it up, the top half was a little bit blurry, a little bit out of focus, but then tweaking this, I found that then I managed to get that focus pretty much spot on. So turbo mode, this is to do with our latency, so it is 15 milliseconds at 4K and eight milliseconds, at 1080p 120 hertz of course 4k that is 60 hertz that it tops out on so a lot of settings in here and sound more options the sound mode music movie sports user basically an equalizer you've got advanced settings here for it as well just the bass the treble uh, you have dts virtual x you can turn that on dolby atmos 2 on i'll put that on later on too when i do the sound test the speaker test for it 
and you can put the output device to be speakers. You can connect up Bluetooth speakers too if you wanted to. Network, that's pretty self-explanatory. Bluetooth as well. General and about. Now there are over the air updates for this unit too. I'll just go into general. So we've just got the power settings, language for it, input method, eye care. You can disable that. I've got it on at the moment. Laser outlet detection, screen saver, screen saver time, key tone as well. You can disable that if you wanted to. So that is the settings for the projector, specific to this projector. Okay, so time to jump into some sample footage. So first up, this is Dolby Vision here we're looking at, but it's only 1080p. We'll have a look at this quality. This is with the built-in playback. You can see it comes up with Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. And this is looking good, but I can tell there, well, the sharpness is decent, but that's not actually 4K, this is. So go now into the 4K K sample, and you can see that that is noticeably looking sharper here too. So the color's very good. You get that broad range with the, of course, HDR, well, Dolby Vision here. And the blacks are looking good. So there's no noise, there's no grain in those blacks at all either. And I just wanted to point out, if you see any banding at all with these test images, that's just because of my camera settings. Projectors are incredibly hard to record. You sometimes get like a rainbow effect. And if you use a shutter rate that's too low, it could look a little bit blurred, but you're not gonna have that when you look at it in person. So if you do see any blurring or what looks like choppy motion, that, trust me, is not happening. This image quality is excellent. Very good, I'm really impressed with just the uh, quality coming out of this tri-laser setup here. So I have a look at one more example here. This is Dolby Vision again. This sample, and I'll just skip ahead. So very vibrant colors here, really bright. Those blues just looking amazing. I do hope this is coming through with my recording. I'm trying to do it justice here, but it can be very, very difficult. I'll just skip back. So the video player performance too as well is very good. And this is a question that often comes up in my projector reviews is how would it fare with bright lights on? So right now I've got a powerful studio light on. You can see I'm well lit, the room is well lit yet it's still doing really well here. Now, of course, the screen is definitely helping. In fact, it's making a huge difference here to have a high quality ALR screen. Watch what happens now when I lower it. You'll see the difference. I won't lower it all the way down, but you can see now when I get it about halfway, the top is looking a lot more washed out. Still, it is watchable, but is it as good as with our ALR screen? No, of course not. But it does fare really well if you've got a decent high quality screen and even plenty of ambient light, maybe even a bit of sunlight coming in, you can still make out the image thanks to that 3000 peak lumens. I'm now using that Fire Stick. This is 4K HDR Dolby Vision with Amazon Prime. And if you have a look at the bottom, you can see that it is Ultra HD HDR. So it's running at 4K, this is in Dolby Vision and the image quality is looking very good indeed. No problems with it. Now, I haven't noticed any color fringing at all. I don't see any issues with the blacks, as I mentioned before, there is no speckle. Looking at the text, it is sharp, everything is looking good. And just to point out here too, that that Fire Stick 4K Max, very good, the performance of it. Everything is fluid here in the menu system and I don't have any problems with it. It all performs quite well. I think it's a little bit better optimized than your typical Android TV box that you would get or Android TV built into a TV. It just seems a bit more fluid there. Of course, we do have YouTube, Netflix, and all your favorite apps are there using the Fire Stick 4K Max. And then what about 3D content? Well, you have to play something that is in 3D. Then you go into the settings. You have to go to image and enable 3D settings and depending on what content you're playing. So this is side by side and I've turned on our glasses and yeah, that 3D is working really well. Of course for you, it's gonna look a little bit messed up because you're not wearing the special glasses that I'm wearing, but I can comment on the 3D that it is excellent, works great and I can definitely watch a movie like this in 3D. And for my final image tests, this is now gaming. So as I mentioned there, we have a latency of just 15 milliseconds for 4K. And at 1080p 120 hertz, it's eight milliseconds. So I'll first test out this game, which is Uncharted Legacy of Thieves.
The PlayStation 5 did detect this as a HDR capable display and this scene is what I've been using for my other projector reviews and I really like it because it does demonstrate the HDR really well although again it's hard to capture this with my camera but we have those oil lamps burning projecting the image through this here so we've got really bright areas with darker patches and the HDR is looking good because I can see all those textures just around where she is walking at the moment on the floor there, looking very good. And then when you look at the far wall, very bright, that image, but not overdone. It might be coming out a little bit overdone with my camera, but no, this HDR looks fantastic. And the latency, what about that? With a game like this, I'm not noticing anything. So when I look to the left, the right then, that is fine. There is no noticeable delay at all. So I'll go over now to Dirt 5 and I'll test out the 1080p 120 hertz. And then set the game to the high frame rate mode and you'll see it'll pop up now in the corner. Yes, it's 1080p 120 hertz. So this is just 8 milliseconds now. Let's jump into the game. Okay, so here we go. I can tell now that it's definitely not 4K, but the image still looks very good at 1080p. It's just not quite as sharp as what it was before. And the latency, yeah, no issues at all with this. I can happily game and really nice at 120 inches too, of course, gaming like this. But input lag, no, no problems whatsoever. Eight milliseconds for this style of gameplay here with a console racing game, perfectly fine. No, really good. Very, very nice. So enjoyable to be gaming like this on just such a huge screen. How about our audio, the built-in speakers? So we've got 36 watt speakers and they can fill the room easily. Now the sample I'm gonna give you now is 50% only, which is very loud. The bass, I would probably turn that down a little bit myself just to help the vocals a bit because it's got a lot of bass to it. And they're really quite powerful speakers too. I am impressed with them. They don't sound like they're built into a projector. They're just so loud. The other thing I really do like about it is the fan noise, which is excellent. Very good. It's the same constant RPM. Now the fan is located here on the right side. So just there, you do feel a little bit of air being moved out of it, but it's nothing bad at all. Some of these projectors can be quite loud and this is certainly very quiet considering how bright it is and the image quality and everything. It's doing a very good job. The cooling on this is great and it got a lot of copper transfer heat pipes inside it. So I'll give you a sample now of the fan noise and you'll hear that it is very quiet. If you're not up close to it, you will not hear this fan. If you've got the speakers on, you definitely won't hear it. Okay, so I'm thoroughly impressed with what I'm seeing here with this AWOL vision screen. I've even got it going in the background as you can clearly see. With my powerful lights on, as I demonstrated before, it fares really well, and yes, that screen is helping. Really nice screen too, the ALR screen, motorized, great from 8 Wild Vision. So when we're looking at our LTV 3000 Pro, I am really impressed with the image quality. So the blacks have no noise, no annoying speckle, no color fringing, the tri is working very well. We've got the 3000 peak lumens, which looks great. Dolby Vision, of course, Dolby Atmos, we even have a DTS, Virtual X with our sound, the 36 watt system is very powerful, puts out a lot of bass, and it can fill a large room to those built in speakers, which is not bad at all considering it's the projector only putting out that kind of sound. Now, of course, you can hook up your own systems and whatnot. We've got the EARC support too with the HDMI port and that Fire TV stick, the 4K Max One that they do include is also very good. So you can play back proper HDR footage. You've got Amazon Prime Video, of course, with that, and you get the Dolby Vision support with it. And then gaming with the 18 milliseconds at 4K with the turbo mode on, which is the higher mode. When you do run that, you don't have then your manual keystone correction. That's gonna be gone, there's no 3D mode either, but you have to enable that for the game and get the then 15 milliseconds with 4K gaming. And at 1080p, 120 hertz, it is just eight milliseconds. So that's as good as the gaming projectors that I have covered. So it just covers it all with that image quality, the color gamut, the kind of coverage it does have, fantastic. 
The HDR is looking very good. The Dolby Vision support there, it all checks out. Now they do have an LTV 3500 model too, which is slightly brighter if you're after even better image quality, they have that model too. But I'm really impressed with this model. What are the things I don't like about it? Well, obviously, and it's like all ultra short throw projectors, that setting up that image, especially even on the screen behind me, did take quite some time that you have to line it all up perfectly. Now, it doesn't have auto keystone correction or auto focus. Now, this could be a problem for some people that tend to move their projectors around a lot. Perhaps you're gonna set it up in front of your screen or your wall, and later on, you just take it away. So it's quite um, an ordeal a little bit to set it up. Depends on how fussy you are. Maybe you can get the exact same position all the time, but normally people would have it permanently set up. So you save your keystone and you do have those eight points of correction also, which is very good. And the focus once tweaked was great for me. So the optics look good. There were no uneven blurry patches at all with my screen. I didn't see anything like that. Once I had focused it all, all really good. You use the test screen to line it all up. That's the only thing, it doesn't have the auto keystone, but the built-in speakers, the package as a whole, yes, it is expensive, but I have covered ultra short throw projectors that cost one, 2,000 more than this, that have inferior image quality. This here is superior. So I've done an excellent job, AWOL Vision, with this model. So thank you so much for watching my review. I hope I covered everything. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments of this video. Thanks a lot for watching.